The brain is a very, very, very complex system. The human brain took billions of years of evolution to get where it is today. Evolution is a bumpy road, and sometimes changes create flaws, and the new systems are added to patch fix the old problems rather than restart the development all over again. Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Because of this, the brain is not perfect, but it does not need to be, and the fact that it isn't is a good thing. The fact that the brain can make mistakes is what forces man to define a philosophy that can repeatedly answer our questions and increase our knowledge of the universe. How the brain works is an unfolding field of study. Neuroscience is a relatively young science, and because of that, there are a lot of unanswered questions, some of which seem obvious and simply remain under study, and some of which are not obvious at all. In preparing for this video, I racked my brain for days, continuously pushing back the release date as I tried to figure out what I even wanted to say on the topic. The goal was to make a brief video that fit perfectly between metaphysics, free will, and epistemology. But I did not want to repeat myself, and I did not want to go into epistemology, and I did not want to begin my video series on the senses, nor did I want to explore the brain before senses and neurons. I left myself nothing to write, because I wanted to write about everything while saying very little in a 10 minute video. In all honesty, that video is not ready, and will not be until we come back around after the next series. I want to ensure that that video is the best essay in the world, so this video will be a tribute to the best essay in the world. Man is a rational animal that starts as a bundle of cells and develops into a CEO of a mining company, or a famous composer, or a pirate. Either way, it required effort to develop a brain possible to do those things. The fetal brain required the mother's reproductive system to act properly in order to form a blank slate newborn. That newborn, in its indistinguishable chaos of passive awareness, is developing a perceptual view of the world. The brain starts with having each sensational contrast or attribute separated from the others that are similar to it. For instance, the auditory part of the brain that has different regions for hearing different hertz, or how the lateral geniculate nucleus, the LGN, has six layers to divide the inputs from the rod into regions for movement, depth, and difference in brightness, and dividing cones into color and form. The separate operations that detect different but similar sensations are then connected in some lobe of the brain. For instance, the optical nerves that come from the LGN radiate in different directions and go to the very back of the brain in a region called V1, where the various different components come together to form a distorted image. Nothing happens in a vacuum, and operations can occur in parallel. While a baby is learning to perceive the visual world, they're learning to perceive the auditory world too, and all the other senses as well. Picking a baby up helps them understand their balance and the relationship they appear to have to the ground. Once all or the majority of the senses are perceiving, the brain can integrate them together. There is no single region for this. There are many different networks that connect many different parts to many different other parts, some of which share many different parts. For the most part, the central hubs of these networks are known for integrating information, such as the thalamus. However, even in parts of the brain that are defined by a task not related to integrating in the same neurological sense as the thalamus, they still are places of conceptual integration. For example, Wernicke's area, which is responsible for language comprehension and is linked to sight, hearing, working memory, speech articulation, motor, and sensory regions. If this part of the brain has a lesion, the patient will have perfectly fine speech, but the words are unconnected. They'll save in the moment. He'll have water very soon for him. Meaning that conceptual meaning is in this area. There is no simple way to approach this topic, and therefore, for the time being, we will not try. All we really need to do is know that the brain has different regions for different senses, and different regions for connecting the different senses. These regions give us everything we need to know in order to discover the universe. Our senses take in reality as it is, and the regions which integrate the percepts we sense compare it to others for verification. 
there is even a region of the brain that lights up when people are confident in their verification. The region of importance for the next step are the regions of executive functions. Executive functions can be divided into cognitive processes such as attentional control, an individual's capacity to choose what they pay attention to and what they ignore, cognitive inhibition, the mind's ability to tune out stimuli that are irrelevant to the task process at hand, inhibitory control, which permits an individual to inhibit their impulses and natural, habitual, or dominant behavioral responses to stimuli in order to select a more appropriate behavior that is consistent with completing their goals. Working memory, a limited capacity cognitive system that is responsible for temporarily holding and the manipulating of information available for processing. Cognitive flexibility, the mental ability to switch between thinking between two different concepts and to think about multiple concepts simultaneously. Planning, the process of thinking about the activities required to achieve a desired goal. And fluid intelligence, the capacity to reason and solve novel problems independent of any knowledge from the past that is necessary for all logical problem solving. It includes both inductive and deductive reasoning. These different functions are learned over time and can be improved with training. Their existence is self-evident in a complete destruction of the determinist view as it is not obvious how these regions make a decision in the mechanical sense. The executive functions of the brain can only be explained by the objectivist point of view, as that whose identity is to make choices that are not mechanically determined. The executive function, such as working memory, have the capacity of retrieving long-term memory as well as interacting with episodic memories and can use a visual spatial sketch pad to rearrange and manipulate short and long-term memories. It is essentially the free will center of the brain, so let's explore one model of working memory to demonstrate this function, Badley's model of working memory. Badley's model has a central executive, which appears to be in the frontal region of the brain, which acts as a supervisory system as well as controls the flow of information to and from the phonological loop and the visual spatial sketch pad. The phonological loop deals with sound or phonological information and has a short-term memory. You can refresh the loop by repeating the sound in your head. This loop appears to be in the left hemisphere. The visio spatial sketch pad is the store that holds visual and spatial information for manipulation. The visuospatial sketch pad activates in the occipital lobe for less intense tasks, and in the parietal lobe when the task is more complex. The episodic buffer is a limited capacity passive system which links the two other systems. This allows for episodic memory as the combination of what was said and who said it and where it was are all combined by this system. The episodic buffer appears to be in both hemispheres and activates in the frontal and temporal lobe as well as the left hippocampus. This model is just that, a model. However, what it presents is a connected system of brain regions which can take from sense data or from short-term or long-term memory and review them like movies and can break them down into manipulatable chunks that allow a perceptual animal to rearrange the universe into impossible configurations, a network of information that allows for the exterior world to be changed to previously unmade inventions. For approximately 4 billion years, living beings have been battling for resources. For 99.9995% of that time, resources were very limited. And then something shocking happened. One animal began to make resources. One animal began preparing for the future and began to produce tools. Some animals, i.e. crows, dolphins, chimpanzees, use tools to get food from hard-to-reach places, but the tools are rudimentary sticks and stones without much modification. But human tools require premeditated construction. This ability to change the metaphysically given into the man-made requires an epistemology that can manipulate mental objects and plan long-term. In forming concepts, the phonological loop can help encode the sounds associated to the object including the sound others make when referring to the object. How does the man know they are referring to the object? Because he can see them interacting with it, and he can distinguish their sounds, and he can access his memories to see if those sounds were made with other objects, and how often this sound is used with this object. Context comes from reality. And I want to end on this idea. 
an idea that needs to be remembered and is often dropped by just about everybody. In preparing for this video, I read a few chapters from my neuropsychology textbook, and the chapter on sensation and perception reads, Most of us take for granted our ability to see the world around us. Up appears to be up, water looks wet, and dogs do not look like cats. What if I were to tell you that much of what we see is in fact an illusion perpetrated by our brains? The complexity behind how our brain sees the world is overwhelming. Somehow, our brains take discrete wavelengths of light and translate them into phenomena that appears to us as the three-dimensional real world. The three-dimensional world is interacting with you, and you are perceiving it correctly. And if you are not, you tend to know the disorder causing you to not perceive it correctly by its name. We know this because our ability to see it properly required that we see it first, then that we see its individual entities, and must choose which ones to focus on, and then how to manipulate the mental entities that reality gave us to create what wasn't possible without free will, man-made goods. Production is the application of reason to the problem of survival. Production is that which other animals do not have. Production requires reason, and reason requires the ability to abstract. And the ability to abstract requires a visuospatial sketchpad which can manipulate a mental entity in such a way to take out its attributes in a way reality would not permit without consciousness. If you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell. And finally, if you find value in my videos, consider supporting my work by going to patreon.com slash youexist and paying what you think my time was worth. Thank you to my current patrons, Alex and Aaron.